What's going on, High Elite Nation? It's Thomas DeLauer, and before you go kicking that person that's eating gluten-free away from the table when you go out to dinner, I think you may want to hear me out when I give you some science on why gluten-free is legitimately being tied to more body fat. There really is some science to back it up. There was a 2009 study that investigated whether or not gluten had an impact on 1948 to 1954 frozen serum versus modern day serum, essentially trying to see if people back in 1948 to 1954 were affected by gluten the same way that we are now. And the results were actually very, very astonishing. What was found was that gluten ended up having a negative impact on four times the amount of people today than it did back then, basically telling us that we are developing a sensitivity to it probably because of the overconsumption. But in order to make some sense of this, I have to describe the science, and you have to understand exactly how gluten affects the thyroid in the body and how the thyroid affects your weight. Okay, so it has to do with something known as a prolamin. A prolamin is just a storage protein, and in gluten, that prolamin is known as gliadin. And this is where the problem starts. It's actually not with the gluten itself, it's with our body's new ability to not digest it. You see, when gluten is digested, that gliadin is cleaved off and that gliadin is broken down by something known as transglutamase. That transglutamase breaks down the gliadin into usable forms. The problem is that those usable forms of gliadin cause an immunological response, and that immunological response triggers a lot of inflammation. And this is simply because we're consuming it a lot. So therefore, that inflammation triggers antibodies, your immune cells, to come in and attack the enzyme. You see, basically what's happening is your body is just doing what it does best. It's trying to find balance, and it's trying to fight off something that's bad. So it fights off the enzyme that's breaking down the proteins. Basically saying like, well, it's this enzyme that's triggering an issue, so if we stop the enzyme, we're gonna stop the problem. All fine and dandy, except we continue to consume gluten, and our body continues to produce the antibodies in the immune response, continuing to fight it. But here's the big serious situation, is the fact that the antibodies that are affecting the gliadin are affecting our other organs too. So you may not just be having gastrointestinal issues, in fact, you may not feel it at all. The gluten could actually be triggering an antibody response that affects your liver, it could affect your lungs, it could affect your brain. You don't really know, simply because your body's immune system is so powerful. Now there's one set of antibodies in particular that are extremely affected by this, and they're known as TPO antibodies, and they're related directly with your thyroid. There are a multitude of studies that are now showing that excess consumption of gluten affects your TPO antibodies, which therefore affect your thyroid function, slowing it down and making it so that you're having a hard time getting your metabolism up. So there legitimately is science that says that consuming too much gluten slows down your metabolism and slows down your thyroid. Now there's one other thing I want to touch on, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time because it could go down a rabbit hole, and that's the fact of glycosphates. Glycosphates is basically Roundup. Now you're going to see it in a lot of wheat these days simply because there's Roundup safe wheat everywhere, and we don't really think too much about it. But the problem is those glycosphates, they chelate minerals in our body. And when we chelate minerals, we don't absorb them. And when we don't absorb minerals, our bodies don't function well. Our electrical systems don't function well. That means we can't work out. That means we can't box jump. That means we can't do push-ups. That means we can't do things because we don't have the electrical signaling to make it happen. So I'm gonna leave it at that and let you do a little bit of research yourself to see if gluten really is something that you may want to at least start limiting out of your diet. And this day and age, I'm not just being hippy dippy when I say that you can get away with a lot of good gluten-free food. So as always, make sure that you're keeping it locked in here with Hailey. We're gonna bring you the science, we're gonna bring you the details, and we're gonna always back it up so that you can be your best self in the office, in the gym, and at home with your family. I will see you in the next hero video.